Um, I think a lot of countries look at Saudi as, you know, a leader in many things within the region, and they kind of set it as a benchmark. For us, um, I think globally is, is a big picture. I think now the world is looking at Saudi, and for the Federation, we want to make sure that the world sees the best of Saudi. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Main Man Show. We are coming to you from Erga Riyav, where we are at a field with the Saudi Arabian national team for rugby. And our guest today is the president of the Saudi Rugby Federation, Adi Dajani. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. All right. And uh, so rugby in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia has been around for quite some time, which I found pretty surprising when I was, you know, researching. But it has a very illustrious... 40-year tenure in sports here in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And in 2010 through 2013, there were some efforts by the Saudi rugby organization to turn things into a federation level. And in 2019, the federation was established. So how popular is rugby as a sport now in the kingdom? I think um, rugby is a dark horse in the kingdom. Uh, the sport, like you said, has a been around for actually quite a long time, um, prominently here in Riyadh, Jeddah, and in Khobar. Uh, we still have active rugby clubs, and we have new clubs opening up uh, almost you know, every couple of months or so. I believe Yenbar has their own rugby club. Uh, Niam is also attempting to have their rugby club within their community. Um, at the moment, we're seeing a big spike in uh, grassroots development. So one of the things that uh, the new federation really wanted to focus on was building a, a pool or a sustainable uh, stream for players to come in and to grow with the sport. Um, I think before it was more of finding young men who wanted to play because yeah. that was what drew, this, drew them to the sport. But now I think rugby has kind of expanded in a, on a global level, one of the fastest growing sports for, for teams and uh, one of the fastest growing sports for women as well. So the Federation's strategy was to focus on sevens rugby, the Olympic version of, of the sport. All right and uh, to target the youth and the women, and uh, at the same time maintain the, the high level of rugby we have for the men. Okay, and then and, uh, the gentlemen in the background are uh, the, the national team for what level? So these are the under 16 boys. Okay. Um, so this is one of the new age groups that we have that we didn't have before, is the under 16 development team that we hope to carry the, the rugby federation and all the aspirations we have for the next 10, 10 15 years of their their playing careers and we hope that you know through programs like the one that we had to bring them in through the schools uh, the outreach programs with the support of some other uh, federations or other services provided from the ministry of sports um you know we tap into those things and i think the sport ecosystem here is growing yeah. at a very fast rate and uh and in a very efficient way okay and uh so since the establishment uh you know of, of, of making rugby into a national sport the Saudi national team has competed in five tournaments. Am I correct? That's correct. All right. And now you guys are scheduled to have a camp in Egypt, right? That's right. So what else are your plans globally, and how are you guys keeping up on a global level for, for rugby? Uh, so globally, like I said, it's, it's a very fast-growing sport, particularly within Asia. I think Asia has seen uh, an increase in number of countries that are registered with the, the Confederation. Um, I think now is a very big time for, for rugby in Asia to kind of excel and have a good competition structure and ecosystem. I think Saudi can also be at the forefront of that when it comes to the region. Um, I think a lot of countries look at Saudi as you know a leader in many things within the region and they kind of set it as a benchmark. For us, um, I think globally is, is a big picture. I think now the world is looking at Saudi and for the Federation, we want to make sure that the world sees the best of Saudi. So our, our mission for the Federation is to show that, you know, it's structured and it's organized and, um, you know, all eyes will be on us at some point. Okay. I mean, that's, that's kind of a trend here with all Saudi development projects, whether it's sports or entertainment or whatever sector is, if we, you know, we're, we're getting into the sector, mm -hmm. we kind of make a big impactful statement on a global level we never settle for just average right absolutely i think um saudi's saudi's vision is is really big and i think you know 
most of the world can't understand what what's going on here and what what the vision is and what the drive is here um saudi has always been an ambitious place and i think at the moment it's going through a very prosperous time i think the outlook for saudi you know regardless of of a lot of the comments around it i think it's doing absolutely fine and i think you know 10 years looking back you know well, we wouldn't believe that you know we're, we're at the point that we're going to be at. Yes, exactly. I mean, ten years or even five years. It's 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 been there's been a lot of stuff going on. And uh, so, what 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 participations are in the horizon for for you guys in rugby? So at the moment, we're uh, preparing our boys for the uh, the local tournaments that we have. So we have, I think, three uh, national tournaments. One okay. of them, two of them, run by the Saudi Rugby Federation. Uh, one in Al Hassa, one in Taif. And then uh, we're also participating in the Saudi Games. Okay. Uh, and then we go to Dubai Sevens as well. So Dubai Sevens is the biggest Sevens tournament in the world. Okay. Um, and then they have a few sub-tournaments there, which we compete in, and a lot of Saudi teams compete in as well. Um, that's where we basically do our benchmarking. We see how we compare to club levels in the UAE or even internationally that are playing in our pool. And then uh, we have the Arab Sevens happening in February. So this is also something we're looking forward to, to you know, deliver an exceptional experience for the for the men, and also to compare ourselves to last year, and of course to our, uh, in our in our our, uh, our brother countries. Okay, and uh, so what's what's uh, the federation's focus right now, and uh, what are your ambitions for women who want to participate in the sport? So my aspirations for rugby, I always thought it was a sport for all. Um, I started off playing a lot of different sports and uh, from my body type, I couldn't fit into many of them. Yeah. Um, I moved to Canada when I was in high school and I got introduced to the sport there and I found that this was actually the, the perfect sport for me. And later on, you start to see that there's different versions of the sport, there's different um, you know, sizes and shapes and uh, you still see people playing up to 60 years old. Um, and we found that, you know, there's touch rugby, which, uh, we found women and men playing together. We found that, you know, we have people that are age 60 playing with people age 18 at a competitive level. So I think, uh, rugby is a sport for everybody, which is our, our motto or our statement. Um, I look forward to seeing, to be honest, being one of the most popular sports in the kingdom. Okay. And, uh, so, you, you know, you, you've had a passion for sports before rugby and, you know, growing up and everything, uh, you know, before we were started recording, you were telling me you liked a lot of sports. So what other sports did you play and which one of them made you get hooked into this world of sports in general? Uh, so I actually started, I was a football player, obviously growing up here in, in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, I was a goalkeeper. So I wasn't, uh, I wasn't fast or agile, but I had a very good responsive time, I could jump pretty high, it was explosiveness. Um, I was a very good discus thrower. Okay. Um, I was at the time in school in Bahrain when I realized I had a, a strength in, in throwing a, a disc really far. Okay. But uh, when I moved to Canada, I was playing volleyball, basketball, and I was actually hesitant to play rugby. Um, I wanted to play f American football. Okay. And then it just said, so happened that my school didn't have a football team. Okay. And the, uh, the rugby coach, um, basically pulled me off every team and kept me on rugby and when I played my first match I was I was hooked you know it was it was just it felt so natural and it felt as if um, you know I should be doing this mm -hmm. when I got to the university level um, I was actually competing in uh, wrestling so I did pretty well there I stopped rugby for a few years just because my university didn't have a rugby team okay and when I moved back here I played with uh, behind rugby club at Hobart as well where I found that my wrestling really helped my, my rugby as well. So uh, how did it help? Besides from being able to take people down, you know? Uh, so <laughs> rugby is, is an intense sport. You know, okay. you're running on the pitch for 80 minutes nonstop. Um, when I went into wrestling, it was just the, the regimen for training was so strict. You had three hours in the morning, three hours at night. Um, and, you know, your cardio, your, your, your endurance level had to be really high because you would have several matches throughout the day in a, in a wrestling meet. So when I came over here, it was just my technique for tackling, my explosiveness, my endurance, my speed was, you know, all plus three, you know. So um, it, it really helped. And sometimes, you know, I was, I was too fast. I was faster than I realized, okay. fall over. And it took a while to kind of get used to that. But um, 
Uh, I think, you know, having this multi-sport background also helped me become good with strategy, became good with teamwork, um, leadership. Okay. So I think um, there's a benefit to playing all sports, of course. All right. And um, so you, you have a degree in healthcare, uh, 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 as yes. you can, right? So what's, what's your degree on? Uh, kinesiology. So uh, kinesiology is study of human movement. I worked in a hospital in Dammam, okay. uh, King Fed Specialist Hospital. I worked there in their motion analysis lab uh, as piloting the program with, uh, with a colleague of mine. And uh, it was actually quite interesting what you can apply from sports science into healthcare. Okay. And we used uh, basically sports science and motion analysis to diagnose people with certain specific movement disorders um, and consult you know, doctors and consult therapists on best action plans from our recommendations. Um, after COVID, I, I was at the time still president of Saudi Rugby and it was just starting to kick off and I got more into the sport management side. Right. Um, it started to grow from there. And, uh, you know, with advisors and with mentorship and with the support of the Olympic Committee, um, you know, I was, I was able to get my board and get my operations going and have a very good technical year. All right. Well, you gave me an example of how sports science can translate to, you know, health. How about vice versa? How, how did what you learn translate into what, what you do today as a president? Well, to be honest, the one thing I learned about working in both mm-hmm. is you can force yourself to take care of your body, right. of your, your wellness, or your illness will force you to take your time to take care of your body. Okay. And uh, I found that, you know, majority of the, the patients that we had, um, you know, had poor lifestyle habits, not engaged in sports, mostly, you know, spectators. Um, and the ones that we did have that were dedicated to their physical therapy, um, rehabilitated much quicker and got to their, their, you know, their health goals much quicker were the ones that were motivated by, you know, going back to be able to run, to, to even to go on walks. Um, you know, in a specialist hospital, you usually see the most severe cases. You don't have the, the average run or the, you know, the average knee replacement. There was some, some pretty serious stuff that we'd saw, seen and it was kind of a, a good uh, trade-off you have. Right. The sports will take care of you, right? It'll build your body to be strong, and then Plus, vice you versa. Know, it gives you that durability. So you know, because af- athletes, as they grow older, they, they you know they they need to have some sort of body maintenance, to, you know, to to so perform at, at the level they want to perform. Absolutely, I think sports builds a discipline. You know, if you want to be good in your sport, um, you can be as talented as uh, you know the most talented person in the world, but without that discipline, without that dedication and, and endurance. Right. Um, it's hard to make it, um, and I think this is, you know, something that's special for every athlete when they look back at their sport and it applies to their lives. There's a reason why, for example, sales they go after a lot of athletes as their sales guys because there's a competitive drive here and a discipline mm-hmm. to to be good at it. Um, and I think that we're also very comfortable with discomfort, you know. So an illness when it's hard, they they want to push even more and sometimes past the limits, but. Um, I think they, they tie into each other very much. And I think one of the, the nice things, you know, in the quality of life program is they see that good quality of life is also followed by, you know, sports and, and habits that you have participating in them. All right. And, uh, so, you know, being a leader in, in, in the kingdom's vision 2030 sports ecosystem, what are your aspirations? You know, what do you hope to contribute to uh, accomplish in sports and rugby in particular? Uh, well, sports, I think, is going in a very good direction. Uh, my father was a uh, national tennis player. Him and his twin brother, uh, they competed against each other for several years for the title. Yeah. Um, and up till now, where, where I became president, a lot of things have changed. And I think it's also always going for the better. I think, uh, you know, obviously there's some things that, that we need to adjust. Um, you know, what, what organization doesn't have to adjust? It's yeah, always new things you learn. Yeah. The bigger you get, the more you learn. I, I learned this with the Federation as well as the bigger we got. I would think things would get simpler, but actually things get more complicated or you have new challenges you have to overcome. Um, for rugby in particular, I think we're going in a, in a very good direction. Mm-hmm. I think going from the grassroots and the women's is going to drive the sport to its best level. I think Saudis have a particular talent when it comes to, to sports. You know, we have the agility, we have the speed, and I think um, 
sevens rugby is is the perfect sport for for them to to dominate in. All right. And uh, so when you're not playing sports and you're not the president of the Saudi Rugby Federation, what do you do for fun? Oh, okay. So for fun, I like I like doing the rugby stuff. Okay. Um, I do. I like to do this show for fun, but it's still, you know, <laughs> I, I do other things. Uh, it's, well, it's it's nice to have a passion that you, you know, that that you're working on. Um, so I, I had a lot of downtime, obviously from COVID, and I learned a lot of things about okay. myself. I like uh, I got into robotics, right? Okay. And uh, I got a dog. And I uh, started to train my dog. I loved training my dog. Mm-hmm. Um, it was also building good habits, you know, to keep me healthy. All right. Um, I did engage in some some video games, and uh, I think at the moment I'm focusing on getting back into to high performance training. So getting myself uh, into into playing shape as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and give our boys maybe a run for their money someday. Okay. But uh, yeah, I know. I I think these are you know some normal things. I think outside of that, I spend a lot of time studying. Actually, I believe, believe it or not, I I love to learn. Okay. I think uh, continuous education always keeps me sharp. And so, what are you learning now? What's what's fun that you that you're learning now? So I learned about uh, recently. I finished a, d- a diploma in uh, data, data analytics. Okay. And I'm um, completing a diploma in sports management from uh, from London. So I'm always learning new stuff about sports management, different strategies, and you know how to deal with things that are helping me with. Mm-hmm. Uh, developing the federation. Yeah. Um, I'm hopefully looking forward to to continue my education afterwards. Probably something else that'll benefit the federation as well. <laughs> okay. Um, and hopefully, you know, it's a very dedicated schedule, by the way. You know, <laughs> I think uh, I'm I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. I think I enjoy what I do, and I enjoy all the things that help me do it. All right. And and then, uh, you know, who who inspired you? Like, where did you get your inspiration from? It could be from family. It could be from movies. It could be from anything. You know, of course. Inspiration doesn't have boundaries. You can be inspired by anyone at any place at any time. Who inspired you? That's a very good question. Um, to be honest, I always, growing up, I always looked obviously up to my parents. And then at some point, I realized I'm not my parents. Mm-hmm. And uh, I kind of wanted to set myself as my own role model. Okay. Um, and recently, I mean, I with with this position, um, I'm looking more towards... You know the people I have to deal with, and the people who are, are making this possible for me to put rugby on the the map. And uh, I look at you know our our crown prince, Mashallah, he's you know changed this country a lot. And uh, you know the minister of sport, um, I see them very passionate in developing something for Saudi. It actually makes a lot of the, the long nights really worth worthwhile. Worthwhile, absolutely. Right. And um, you know even you know as a president, you're a volunteer. And I think for me, this is you know I. It's amazing. I don't want to say it's, it's something I would do over my day job. I mean, yeah. I have to make a living, but yeah. it's definitely, you know, something I, I enjoy a lot and I, I take a lot of pride in doing it. I can understand. I mean, I have a day job, but yet I still do this because I enjoy this. And I think it's, you know, my contribution to the industry and to take it to that next, next level. And before we started recording, I think you're being humble because you also told, you know, like, or you don't want to expose your personal side a little bit and keep it a little more professional. But you like Spider-Man. You told me Spider-Man was one of your favorite movies. Why do you like Spider-Man, aside from, you know, somebody flying everywhere and, <laughs> you know, we read through webs? The thing I like about Spider-Man is, uh, to be honest, his backstory. You right. know, he's always had a, a tough life. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he grew up not not so wealthy. He grew up lower lower middle class. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if you watch the, sh- the movies or see the comics, he's always struggling for something, you know. Yeah. And uh, it never breaks his character. Mm-hmm. Um, and always, you know, that one rule that he, that he gets from his uncle is like, with great power comes great responsibility. Mm-hmm. And I think the, the older I got, the kind of more I understood it, and especially in, in times or situations like this one. Yeah. Um, yeah, the decisions that I, I potentially make today have a very big effect on, you know, the youth of tomorrow. You know, whoever decides to pick up a rugby ball or maybe even other sports, and uh, whoever decides to become president next will will hopefully look to follow an example or to, to continue the success that we hopefully built. So I think, uh, you know, that, that simple line goes a long way. I think it applies to a lot of different things. All right. And uh, before we wrap up our interview, you know, what's your personal message for the main man show and Arab News audience? I think uh, I think you guys are doing actually a great job of, of showing Saudi the news, you know, the yeah. things that are available in Saudi and the news Saudi. I think there's, uh, like, like myself, I think 
before I, I came into the scene, nobody knew that there were Saudi rugby players. Okay. Um, and now we found, you know, a couple playing in Australia and Canada and Ireland. So I think uh, bringing these things to light is actually uh, really added benefit to, to the society. Um, I honestly, I'm, I'm imploring people to, to come and try sports. I think a lot of people don't know their sport until they've tried it. Mm -hmm. I, we actually have a rugby player uh, who played his first match when he was 30 years old. Right. And he was like, I wish I played this when I was, you know, a child. This right. is what I was, this is the sport I love. And now he plays every year, you know, and he's, uh, I think even for myself, I picked up the sport a little bit late, but had it been available, I think, you know, it could have been a very uh, successful sports career. Um, so I, I implore everybody to try it. There's, you know, I think over 90 federations at the moment. And all of them trying their best to to reach out and to to find you. So make it easy and find them. All right. Okay. Fair enough. And uh, I'd like to wish you and the team nothing but the best of luck in your future camp and that's happening in Egypt. Uh, I'd like to know what you guys are up to on a regular level. So um, let's keep in touch and, and and see how it goes. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on the show, and uh, look forward to. You know, grow the sport and uh, connect to Syria. All right, sounds good. And uh, be sure to tune in to the one and only May Man Show. And to close the episode, I'll give you what little things inspire me. So, an Imagine Dragon song with one simple word that says, well, "I do whatever it takes" because I love the adrenaline in my veins. So this gives me adrenaline. See you later. <laughs>